There are stories you ought to know because in the simplicity of their image and their telling isn't one simple message, but instead the story itself opens a door to something so much greater than that one simple image. It's just bread. It's just bread. You couldn't, you couldn't really find anything simpler than that, right? I mean, even, we even have an expression that goes bread and water because that's the least you can give to somebody. Bread and water. When we share a meal together, we say we're breaking bread. It's a simple thing. It's the first thing that you make. You don't just eat a mouthful of grain, you turn it into bread. It's pretty basic. So basic, in fact, that when Jesus performs a miracle by feeding a crowd, he gives them bread. He does not give them craft dinner. He does not give them steak. He gives them bread. So basic, in fact, that when Jesus wants to give us a way to remember him, he says, here is bread. Here is wine. The simplest of things. And that opens a door on something else. The people who followed Jesus from that miracle to the other side of the lake wanted him to do more. Show us, do some more stuff. After all, you know, Moses made the bread come every day. So... And Jesus' response to that, of course, is the obvious thing. It's the obvious thing that we knew from the story, and somehow they didn't. It's the obvious thing. The bread didn't come from Moses. It came from God. How did you not get that? And yet, we still come to Jesus, we still come to God with the expectation that God will do something for us. How does God let these things happen in the world? How do you let these things happen in the world? Because that's the point of the bread metaphor. The point is that Jesus feeds as God feeds. The bread's a metaphor for spirit, spiritual nourishment, isn't it? Of course it is. Yes, it is. But you can't stop there. You can't listen to the preacher on Sunday morning say, bread is a metaphor here for the spiritual nourishment that comes from coming to God through Jesus. And go away going, oh, that's nice to know. You have to do something with it. In sharing the bread, in consuming the bread, in being nourished by the bread, which is God, which is Jesus, we are fed and nourished in spirit. But we are not just spiritual beings. We have bodies, we have minds, we have emotions. The story of Jesus is a story of wholeness. It's not just about feeding your spirit, it's about how bodies are fed. Remember two days ago when I fed 5,000 people? That's the point of that story. However you choose to understand the miracle of that story. The point is, bodies were fed. That's your job now. I showed you how to do it. If you come to me and are nourished in spirit by me, you will want to feed the bodies of others. You will want to feed the hearts of others. You'll want to feed the minds of others because yours will also be fed in the doing of that. That's the bread we share. It's simple at first, and then it becomes something huge that everyone connects with. It was just a shirt. 
All they took from her was a shirt. It was a stupid piece of clothing. No, it wasn't, was it? It was a precious gift from her granny. It was a gift that was given to her in a moment when she was celebrating the fact she was going to somewhere which was not at all what she thought it was going to be. It's very easy to tell that story, by the way, as she had an orange shirt, they took it away from her, and it became a metaphor for all of the things that were taken away from indigenous people in residential schools. But that's not the story, is it? The story is the wonderful life she was living with Granny, the excitement she had, the precious gift of the orange shirt, the thing that she had that reminded her of the life she had, and her granny. And it becomes the first thing taken away from her. The first thing of many. Language, culture, lives. That's why it's such a powerful image. It becomes representative not only of the things that were taken, but of the willingness, the, the inspiration of someone to tell their story. Because she told that story, others began telling their story. So the doors open a little bit. Opening the door wider is up to you and me because it's not just about inspiring people to share their story. It's about the willingness of people to listen, to hear the, the story, to understand, and to do something about it. It wasn't just a shirt. And the thing is, the thing is, she went to a place where she expected, she expected and hoped to learn and grow. And that was taken away by people who claimed to live as Jesus and didn't. She was not fed and nourished by the bread of Jesus, by the very people who proclaim it. Now, we can be bread. We can be Jesus. We can offer nourishment. We can listen. We can try and understand. We can offer support and encouragement. We can be willing to say, forward is the way that we want to go but we need to hear the stories of the past in order to get there. It took generations for us to get here. It will take generations for us to go forward. But forward means education. It means learning. It means listening to stories. It means understanding that the simplest of things can open us to something so much bigger. That's what Jesus was hoping for when he was talking to these people in the story. And yet, he had to remind them they still didn't get it because like they should have got it when Moses said, this isn't me, this is God that is doing this for you. Be inspired. Be inspired because not just your body is nourished, your spirit is, your heart is, your mind is. Be inspired to love and to offer grace and compassion and to share that nourishment with each other. And prophets and Jesus and all sorts of people have tried to remind us of that on a near constant basis.
And yet here we are, wanting to remind ourselves again that forward means being bred and to each other. It means nourishing each other. It means having open ears and open minds and open hearts. The journey is going to be long, but we are part of it. We are the next steps, even. And it just starts with a simple thing. <laughs>